We now have a team come in. Team sounds like real professional, like Navy SEALs come in to like sweep the yard up. Hey, my How are you? Okay. Two things make you dry bright. It's gonna be dry and bright. We'll go outside and hopefully there is a young, vibrant, and exceptional man that is gonna to talk to you about it. You know Rich? Hello, Rich, you're right. Right, as you can see. Oi. Oh, look, look, it's following me everywhere. <laughs> this is why uh, Scrapman's best friend is a magnet. You're my best friend. Oh, thank you. What does this do, Harry? Well, that's a ruler. It's a what? Ruler, isn't it? Right, okay. Watch your back. Hey, how are you? What's your, what's your, what's your not going to run over. Hey, everything good, yeah? Everything's good, mate. Everything's good. good yeah, that's the biggest. That's like the biggest remaining block I've ever seen. It's massive, it is. Don't want to fight him. He can have nine pound a kilo on drive right. <laughs> Welcome back to the Scrapo Kingo Dario. And you might be thinking, Christ, what a busy yard. You've got, we've got about 16, 17 vans lined up. A recovery truck and loading now. Four waiting for the ninth Ferris. One just leaving, and there'll queue up the road outside. So we are absolutely manic busy. So busy, in fact, we've actually had to improvise. A, I'd say a night shift, but more it's just like an after hours shift. We now have uh, a team come in. Team sounds like real professional, like Navy SEALs come in to like sweep the yard up. No, we were struggling before to get the yard in tip top shape for the following day. And the lads were having to sweep up and it was a bit of pressure at the, at the end of the day, you see, to uh, get it straight because the Romanians and the customers, they are queuing up from three in the morning. So the second we open the gates, they are like forcing themselves into the yard. And then by 7 a.m., if the scrap is not pulled back, the vans are already unloading the scrap in the middle of the yard, which is no good. So look at the size of our light iron pile. It's gone. And the reason it's gone is the lads that come in on the evening at five o'clock, they sweep all the yard back, they get all of the steel up to that corner, and then they both process all of our scrap and make a, uh, one and two. So since starting it last week, for example, we smashed over 1,200 tonne of one and two in one week. We were having like 10 Arctics a day in, which took a lot of pressure off because the scrap was already made and the lads that are on the day shift don't have the extra pressure of actually making it while they're loading it. Okay, so we have to pay two guys wages, and then the upkeep on the machines, the extra fuel and things like this. But the pressure that we don't face anymore with having the material ready, if four or five wagons are already waiting outside in the morning, is worth every penny. Scraps go in, we can get more customers in now. We can get up to 20 vans in a line in the morning, which means that the queue on the road goes down. So we're doing everything we can as a business to reduce the impact of annoyance on the local residents, the businesses next, to the, next door, left and right. We don't want the queue on the road, but we are like, we can only fit in what we can fit in the yard. So we're doing our best. We're getting everything pushed down, chopped up, ready to ship out. We're getting more vans in every single day. Uh, customers are happier. We can handle more material, more efficiently. So yeah, it's a great, great, uh, what is February still? Great, great end of the month for February. Can't moan. Although what it has highlighted is, because the scraps are back now, the yard's got a lot more uh, width space because there's not enough, you know, there's not a big pile of scrap here. So we've got a hole in the ground that needs repairing. Sergio, come on! Because the machine is blasting out the one and two like no tomorrow, one of the steel panels that protects the concrete walls that started to come loose. It's a bit more maintenance, but we are on top of it. We have our first service on the Taurus since it's been back operational which hassles have taken over, which we're very pleased about. They came out today just to have another quick look at the logistics of doing it because of the way the engines are situated in the machine. One of them is actually spun round, which makes it near enough impossible to actually drain the oil out of it. Bad design, but there we go. So they've come out today, check that out. They're doing Sunday. We'll have a bit of maintenance on Sunday. So really, at the moment, we're not just like 365, we are 365, 247, you know what I mean, Will? Well, it is a leap year. Is a leap year, yeah. and that means nothing to me, mate. 366, six, isn't it? 366, six. yeah. the extra day. Yeah. God, that means I get an extra day of being me. Also, I hope you all had a lovely Valentine's, that's what we were filming last time. Will, did you have a lovely Valentine's? You're a newly uh... drive. If you pull forward a bit and get him out, I'll get you down then. Sergio, pull over to the left, mate, and he can come past you. Not away. Bit of Tetris, let's go over there. 
Why are you going backwards? Ah, there we go. Oh, and also, Auto Arnie Alley. Uh, something to say about that. We are actually exporting our first box on Tuesday next week. Uh, so hopefully I can get Will here to film that. But we have got more than enough now for a full 25 tonne load. And it's a trial. So the customer that it's going to, uh, he has got a rough idea of the value that it's worth. He is an end user of Ali Ingots abroad. So if the auto only goes to him, we've set a price. If it goes, he's happy, we're happy, all that sort of stuff. I can then offer more money on auto Arnie Ali going forward because I'd like to do more quantity of it. Uh, so yeah, new outlook, we're gonna see how it goes. Because of the uh, um, increase in, what are we gonna call it, like foot traffic? More customers, things like that. Oh my God, one second. Hello, uh, we are being more and more vigilant on gas bottles and lithium ion batteries. Now, I spoke about these before. What episode was it? I'll find out. Yeah, we'll find out. We'll put the episode link in here for you guys to watch when we had a fire. Now, over the weekend, there was three fires in three different scrapyards. One of them was very local to us and actually got confused with us. It wasn't us, fortunately, but we don't wish it on anyone. Very stressful, awful uh, thing to you know have to go through. But again, realistically, it would have been started off from a lithium ion battery uh, and they're becoming more and more prominent. In fact, the BMRA have actually called for more government action and advice on how we can tackle these going forward because it seems that when all these uh, devices like e-scooters and things like this are made, and in the today's throwaway world, everyone is uh, onto the next thing, and they haven't really thought the longevity of these items. So we're gonna use an e-scooter, for example. If you've a company that have made these, you know, you want your customers to get the new model in a couple of years and just keep that you know, going. So all of the ones now that have been out, they're starting to be recycled, and they're gonna end up at places like ourselves, but gonna put us at a massive, massive danger for fires. So yeah, the BMRA have actually called for more government action on it. Just advice, really. There isn't really like a safe and uh, a safe or a specific place in the UK that we can take them to yet and recycle them. I think there was a place locally, like at Leicester or something, that was doing lithium ion batteries. And they started out and they actually had a fire after two days and it was finished. So yeah, they're dangerous. I'm gonna try and put a link for another YouTube video that somebody made that I saw that had different things like iPhones and that and the, the, what happens when they set a light. Because I know that we did the episode and tried to show the dangers of lithium ion batteries, but we didn't manage to do it. But this video is a great example of how dangerous they are. So yeah, I'm glad that all of the yards that had fire issues over the weekends, you know, they're, they're, they're okay. I think the one had a bit of damage, but awful. It's an awful, awful time for scrap yards at the moment with all these things coming through. Watch your back, Will, you're gonna get run over. Sergio again. Sergio. Right. So you want a bit more upbeat? Yes. That was depressing, wasn't it? It was, Fires. Bit, yeah. It's good though, wasn't it? You know, I felt like Carol Vorderman just talking. Right, drive! Holly Willow movie. I was getting more of a Philip Schofield vibe. Huh? I was getting more of a Philip Schofield vibe. I don't really want to go down the Philip Schofield vibe, especially after my day them comment last week. <laughs> oh, look at these bad boys. Old, hey, Margita! How are ya? Okay. You know, I've never known a bloke love a broom so much, man. He's fantastic. Lovely. Uh, don't forget, guys, we are the UK's biggest buyers of electric motors, but we also buy fridge compressors. I'll tell you what I do like for David. I do love, I love fridge motors. And that's an example of them there. Mixed size, blue, black, small, large. Don't stitch me up and just put a load of blue ones in, but mixed fridge pots, I can buy them. Uh, on today's market, there might be a bit of wiggle room in this for a merchant, but I'll be on £550 per tonne, which is a fantastic rate. Uh, and they also go for export, so don't forget me. You know what I mean? Same day payment. And we had seven tonne this morning. And before the lorry had even left the yard, the self bills emailed to them. Bosh! Fish of... Super cool, that is. What? Fridge pots. Fridge pots? Well, you know, look, look. Very cool. Sounds like a sarcastic comment, that is. I oh, know, it's because they, they make things cool. Oh, ah, yeah. right, right, okay, I got you. <laughs> Someone's phoning me again, who's this? There's not a lot of stock. However, this is how fluctuant and on a de almost a daily basis, everything changes. We'll see you over there. Um, the copper's gone up another, like, it went down like 300 pounds last week and basically it's gone back up to the same now. It's not really annoying. Because you don't know where you stand at all, ever. Six pound 30 a kilo. Woo. That is top whack. Top whack. 
And two things make you dry bright. It's gonna be dry. And bright. I think dry bright is worth the most in the copper because of the fact that once it's been refined, you can almost recycle 100%. That's why the difference between this and a copper tube is because it's 98% copper, which I believe is down to the refining rate and things like that. Just down to purely the fact that if it's got paint and solder on it, they're not just 100% copper, you know what I mean? Things like that affect the price 2%, a little bit lower. Bosh. Bosh. Come on, we'll keep up. Don't wish I had, yeah? What? Like, no interruptions for like three days, and then get all of the copper and stuff over there on a conveyor belt. A couple of coppers, just do -do 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 -do. Do -do 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 -do. Straight in the bins. Nice. On the floor there, I'm betting there's 40 grams. It's mad, isn't it? Well, maybe not 40, probably like 25, but still, a lot of money. That's quite Sat a difference. There. Pardon? It's quite a difference. It's quite, it's quite. <laughs> <laughs> Can we um, show the viewers the brass wall? Because we last week, someone commented that it was mainly just you that we could see and not Listen, the Listen, I don't hold the camera. <laughs> that's not my fault. You are in the way of the camera. I, no, that's not, that's not the case. I just stand and do my thing. And if Dilemma. Will decides to fixate on me because of my dashingly good looks, then that is down to him. So viewers, bosh! Someone also commented saying, I know it would be hard to work out, but what do you think the total value of the brass wall would be in terms of scrap value? Now this was the episode that we wanted to reflect back on. I think it was season three, episode three. Correct. Oh, was it? Yep. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, as you can see, you ask, we deliver. Here we are, empty shelves, because we're going to weigh all the stuff up now and tell you guys what weight and what value we've actually collected in old brass ornaments on these shelves. I think we weighed it up to 1,740 kilos. I think that is what we weighed up at the time. For those of you who, are, who want to know the weight of the brass ornaments, the weight is 1660. Hey! So What's the value of that? Um, I will tell you, about 6,400 quid. That's other scrapyard prices. At our scrapyard prices, it works out to 7,138 pounds exactly. Nice. That was like, God, a year ago. And we have added, I'd say, at least double. So if we went on the basis of this four tonne of brass, and we've got the shelves over here as well, which we forget about, four tonne of brass ornaments at four pound a kilo, which is what I could pay you today if you delivered it into me. So today's rate on brass, I am paying, and that's what we'll do it on, four pound 30 a kilo. Four times four, 16,000. 16,000 pounds. Right. So when Christmas comes and we're all shivering cold and the electricity bills are up, and we do another video on how people can make their money for the household items, Listen, your nan is freezing cold in her house, shivering. She can't stop you taking that brass on. Just take it, bring it to me, and it might end up on the wall. In fact, any item, right, that comes in and is so cool that it's going on the brass wall, it's five pound a kilo. That is... Under, under, <laughs> under 10 kilos. <laughs> you know what sort of thing that big, big bust. That is something to blow your brass horn at. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, Lee's it, oh, Lee. Do you want to, what happened with your test? How, how many did you pass by? He's not very happy because he did fail. Loads of people did wish you luck. How did it go? Did they? Yeah. That's nice. I failed by four. On oh, which bit? The multiple choice? Multiple choice, yeah. The other one I'd done all right. Oh, my God, right. yeah. Oh. Oh. No bike for the moment. Oh, where's this come from? You can't put that in your... Keep it separate, see it as is. Copper Swarf, lovely. Yeah, we also had another delivery today, which I want to talk to you about, which will go outside, and hopefully there is a young, vibrant, and exceptional man that is going to talk to you about it. Oh my God, it's Ricky T. So matter, Arnie Ali, it's worth more as Arnie Ali. Cheers, Sif, John. No, Rich. Hello, it's your eye. What are we doing? What's happening? Well, we've bought a load of stainless steel. But it's not stainless, it's Arnie Alley, so we're cleaning it and processing it and maximising its value, really. So hopefully, hopefully you didn't overpay for it. You bought it. 
And there you go. Is that all you've got to say? Yeah, I can show you exactly what I'm doing. Come on, Will. Let me show you. Right, well, as you can see, this is iron and stainless. Look, the magnet doesn't stick, it's stainless. But then it will stick to that so it's steel. So we've taken the steel off it to maximise the value of the stainless, otherwise it's known as iron alley. Oi. Oh, but look, it's following me everywhere. Who <laughs> <laughs> put that there? Look. So there you go. Good fly. So that is what we do. I'd just also like to point out that a lot of catering equipment is 31 stainless steel, a lot of it can be 316. Anything like food related is usually stainless steel because of the fact that it does not rust, right? So it's more hygienic, blah, 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 blah. We love rust, don't we? We love rust, but we love stuff that doesn't rust as well, don't we? So, people have the vision that if they've got this stainless steel item, machine, whatever, that that's what they can weigh it in as. But a lot of the time, because it's so... Hey, Piggy, <laughs> Darren! Isn't that Dennis? Dennis, look. You know what a guy, man. Because of all of the contamination inside it, for example, like this had some roller things on it, they're steel, it is only Iony Alley. Now, for us to sell this as clean stainless, we have to chop it up, separate all the parts off it, and put the motors in the motors, seal in the seal, blah, blah, blah. Unless you had like a fag plant with your overbound magnets and your pin separators and that, it's labor intensive with oxacetylene, okay? This is why a scrap man's best friend is a magnet. You're my best friend. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I'm your only friend. Oh, don't, don't, don't give me a backhanded compliment. I was being nice. <laughs> it's not all... Two it's, it, oh, I've got two friends. <laughs> yeah, now. two? Yeah. One's quite nowhere. But anyway, annoyingly, the customer thinks that this is saying the seal worth £970 a tonne. Unfortunately, it's more like Heine Alley worth 350, 400 pounds a ton. Sure. So, Where are you going? sorry, sorry, you're all right. Great air, you like it's one, one great air. Got a little, one little great. You haven't got one air, so shut up. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't at me with your f here. Oh, I was just lovely to you over there. <laughs> oh, no, sorry about that. I'd have to deny that. Can you get that just from men on it? Somebody commented he's 45 and they've never grown a beard before. Oh, <laughs> each to their own. So, there you go. So, get your stainless done out of the way and just move around the yard and just tidy up all the mess, really. I think we should get a frag. Um, we've got space. Under the yard. <laughs> one day, one day, that's the plan. And then we can go, I need bash straight in. Yeah, off the bridge. You about to give him 200 kilo. <laughs> <laughs> to you. 575. I'll give you 540. 574. 575. Rapido. You know, what are you weighing at? Fucking six ton. <laughs> also, I like how you've got rid of the shuffle to go for another country estate <laughs> sleeveless jacket. All right, all right. When's the next clothes order being made? The next clothes order. And who's it off? Because I want to keep my own stuff. Fine. And then you do a little list though. Yeah, fine. Add it on. I've got to get him a personalised shuffle with the print on it. No, because they're 150 could have popped, but I ain't getting one of them. I'm getting one from Sweden. It's the seller, I'm getting one. What? Yeah. Uh, shuffle. Delay. I mean, he does cool clothes, man, to be fair to Squeeze Orange, so everything that is on the website, you won't like. Oh, <laughs> do the favour, man, a full, full favour, you know, what you're saying, it seems like. Why happens a full? Put your hat on your head. Come on, man. <laughs> Put your hat on your head. <laughs> Today. Let me just do a few deals. Yep, tomorrow, mate, on the list, no worries at all. Ah, Rich! Anyway, someone commented, we're going to do a competition, and the winner gets £100, we'll bank transfer it straight to him. Bosh, for the winning. What's the competition? Competition time. Viewers need to submit their best Richard impression video. <laughs> Winner gets an item from the brass. What are we going to do that instead? You get to come down and choose your own item. No chance. What do you mean, no chance? Some of, some of them items are just fucking worth a fortune. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. That's what they're in a scrapyard. They're worth scrap value. No. So you either get 50 non refundable English pounds <laughs> or a less than five kilo item off the brass wall of your choice. Three kilo. Six kilo. Anyway, I've got work to do. No, no, do a few more comments. Well, I'm coming. I hope you've got tax and insurance. Good, mate. Uh, Norfolk Fire and Rescue just bought 22 of the five brand new fire trucks because we scrapped one last week. And they cost between 330 and £370,000 each. Yep. That is cheap for saving lives, isn't it? Yep. What about the old ones? Are they available? I don't know. 
Hand reared. Hand. Hand reared. Hand reared. <laughs> Come and look, it's like chickens in the picture. Said that her dad actually worked on the fire engine from Dennis that was made in here. Oh, really? Yeah, a long time ago. And they actually made them as a loft. Wow. Bad man, isn't it? Rich needs to come back with his shuffle. We miss him all too much. But the pigeon was amazing, made me laugh. Show the pigeon again. Let's have a look. Hey, Pigino! <laughs> Is that a brass spitfire next to the brass wall? Yep. Solid brass. You're like, an, you're like an index of the brass, aren't you? Yeah. Oh, Will, this one's for you. Fake taxi. Oi, oi. Rich, did you see the edit? From petrol, yeah, petrol yeah. head bloke. I was driving on. You were, you were, you were John, you were. Oh my God, is that his name? How do you know? So much detail. <laughs> and then this is your scrap missus. Yes, Rich. Bloody love the pigeon because I bloody love brassy goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I've asked, I've asked Lowe's to see that brass wall finally, although the camera was on Harry more than the wall. I'm with Rich. I love hanging stuff up in my workshop shed. This week, addition is a stunning brass naked lady bus opener. Hey! Fantastic. <laughs> Lovely. Then, oh my god that spoils Mrs. Naked. Oh. <laughs> right. I've got words so thank you very much. Is that your input done now? Right, yeah? Share and subscribe and I'll see you next week. <laughs> I think you're the worst person ever man. Where's the brass spitfire? You're in there you <laughs> 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 hey, I'm ready to pass the pigeon. Pass the pigeon. Put it back somewhere safe, please. Oh, well, it's heavy. I know. Four kilo there. Look at a solid pinio. That's going up, Will. The old flower. What is it? It's a flower. Oh, you f***ing bitch. Where's this, where's this Spitfire? That? That's not f***ing. Do you know how much that would weigh if it was solid? What's in that box? Will down. Terex. Don't be left. And it is oil. Oh, that's boring. See, see, it's been a full week of those lights being in the same position as they were. They're going up without in 10 minutes. No, they're not going up anywhere. So you care, park elsewhere. <laughs> <laughs> ah, get out of the rain, man. So, a lot of you commented on the last episode that you wanted to see a more of a certain somebody, and that somebody is Me. Super Lee! Why? So, Lee has been buying the world's, no, the most catalytic converters any scrapyard has ever seen in the world ever. Without fail. Without yes. fail. Yes. On a daily basis. However, the cat market is. Yes. The cat market is, is dead. There is next to no money in it anymore. There is next to no cats around anymore. The prices of fallen off and I was actually speaking to uh, an end user yesterday of Rhodium. No, no, I made that up. What was it? What was it called? I forgot what it's called. Platinum? Rhodium. Rhodium. Might be Rhodium. Might be Rhodium. So Rhodium, right, spot value is really, really high, yeah? Mm -hmm. But nobody wants to buy it. Why? I don't know. There's like only a, there's only a certain few refiners that'll actually take it. So if you can find a home for it, it's worth a lot of money. But you might have a lot of it, and if you can't find a home for it, it's worthless because nobody's buying it. You can't just like it's not like scrap where you get copper and you can go to any scrapyard with it and they'll buy it. Rhodium is high spot value, but there's only a few buyers, so it's very difficult to sell, as daft as it sounds. Are there many buyers in England? No, but yeah, cats are a dying trade, I think. Although it's weird because they're still being put on cars. Um, so the future is bleak. The future is bleak on the cats, and obviously during COVID, when the prices were so high, the cats were hammered so much, it's actually become like a bit of a drought. I have customers and they've got them. I got four or five hundred pounds for them. You did, yeah. Now they're getting like fifty, sixty pounds. It's just nuts. What are you going to do with the cat office? What, we're going to close office? it. I was going to make it into a bit of a. I was going to get a table tennis table and that. If I close it, we'll, we'll close it. That's fine. We'll do that instead. It's going to get like a beer keg and stuff. But... No, no. I mean, like if we close it, save it electricity. <laughs> In three large quarters. <laughs> I'll tell you what. I do need a printer. Because this is the no, one. I don't think the money we earn out the cats anymore is going to cover the cost of the income. No, so I can, <laughs> no, so I can pay them. Uh, no, you're, that, 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 that. We won't. You can't self fill off that PC. Why? I took it off. Why? Because. Don't trust me. It wasn't you. We've but, known each other for yeah, a who, very, who, very, who, very, who, very who long was, time. Who was on the computer before? That was the. That was the. Oh, that was okay. the but uh, we've known each other a very long time. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. Obviously, if you're getting a cat that was worth 500 quid now, it's been worth like 50 or 60 pounds. You can only take a fiver out of it. Or oh, look after our customers better than that. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> And then another problem we've got in the yard, which is why we're filming inside today, is because of the rain, right? And what we've actually realised is the drain in the middle of the yard has been blocked. So we've had the drain rods out this morning. Rod in the, rod in the hole, or whatever you want to say rod it. Rod in the hole. Rod in the hole, man. And then just trying to make sure that the... Because uh, obviously all the customers have to drive for the water, and then the water has just got to have it to... Oh, and also, as well, right, the water lifts up all the dirt on the floor and then deposits it in different areas, and the yard looks a mess afterwards. So long story short, the more it rains, the longer it's going to take for it to come back to YouTube. Yeah. So bring on summer. Summer, get the, he's going to be doing everything. Get the, get the heat wave in, clean yard, busy yard, immaculate. Rich is sort of sack me, and then the easy's going to take over again. Hey, yeah, look. Cats. Anyway, the, the WhatsApp number is still working. So please, <laughs> put your, message the, it. The because, pay the bill, don't worry. <laughs> you know, the WhatsApp number is still working, but like, it's just tough. Do you have a password in the pet system? Which one? Let me show you. Yeah, go on. Do, come on, Willie, let's go and fix this problem. Enough about cats. Hey, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. I'm going downstairs. How many stairs did you go down? I did three stairs then. <laughs> oh. Yeah, ah, that's why. Admin. Jeff had, what's that? What is it? Oh, what's it called? Visa. Oh, nice. Is it just che cheese, and cheese and ham? No, oh, nice, yeah. Bosh. Ta-da! Joe, nice one. Uh, you two. Oh, yeah, yeah, so we've got another skip. We're doing, we're doing innovative things now. Let's go have a look. So, here at HB20 Metals, we are like a like a suit tailor for scrap metal and recycling needs. So this customer it fits well. You know what I mean? This customer scrap said, Taroni's fits well. Oh, it's just like a glove, man. Like a size nine, straight over. <laughs> rain. Oh, like a girl, ain't I? Oh, look at that. That was good, didn't it? Yeah, Structural support and all that. You can actually fully seal it off. Yeah. So tailor made experience. The customer has only has space for one skip, but has two products that needs to be securely locked into a linen skip. So we bought a new one from Field Fair Forum, right? And then we brought it back to the yard, and Mark is actually now welding in a divide in the center, because each side of us... What does this do, Harry? <laughs> this side. Well, that's a ruler. It's a what? Ruler, isn't it? Right, okay, it yeah. measures, that's a ruler. Yes, yeah, you know. yeah. And, what, what's, and that's a 90 degree angle. Yeah, so what's this? Centimeters. Yeah, what's this? Inch. No, that's centimetres as well. That's inches, that's what's centimetres. What's this? Numeric numbers. Are you just reading the... <laughs> Numeric? Look. Numeric numbers. I just think it's two rulers stuck together. It basically, yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so this I customer... get what we use boys at times, I tell you. <laughs> well, that's why you're doing all the, well, that's why you're doing all the things that, they, that yeah. require a lot of, like, intricacy. Oh, look, it's just cut and it's <laughs> finished. That's it, yeah, I just... I make it look easy, don't I? That's how, how, do you, how do you actually do the welding? You just f***ing ram it on it. Just, Have a go, mate. Put the I did try on that container ages ago, and it just, I just I f***ing did it on the stick welder. Yeah. No good, but not no for me. No good, well. Not for me. <laughs> you need somebody to teach you, mate. I that's need some more need. patience. That's yeah, what you yeah. need. I haven't got any patience. Yeah, you haven't got... Well, well, you've got patience. You have. Have I? But you just... You're not... Sometimes you're not with, the, with us, are you? I am. It's this, isn't it? Like it's <laughs> like this. Do you want to know how many... Harry, I send Harry today. are you there? Do you know how many texts I send today? Probably about. I would, I would probably say 1,500, 2,000 a day. Than, out of them 1,500 texts, how many work related? Probably all of them. Five. About, about say 1,400. Oh, except your wife and so I presume, like, you know. Are you alive? Is the baby okay? Yes. See you at five. So, uh, so 1,998. Yeah. Out of 1,500, I did say that. So, anyway, <laughs> any skip and recycling needs. We can actually, we bought this kit brand new, we've tailor made it for the customer, so they're gonna be happy. And then in one side, they're putting secure destruction, pharmaceutical stuff, and in this side, they're putting general waste. But they only have space for the one skip. So this is the service that we provide. It's going out on site on Monday. So Mark better get a move on. Monday? Tomorrow. Is it? Tomorrow. Tomorrow, <laughs> tomorrow man. See, that's what Richard does with logistics, so I've got a clue. All I do is buy and sell, and look good. No, leave them, Harry. Thank Plastic you. Plastic lids. Yeah, yeah, you will break them. You will break them and then disappear and then.
forget about it, and then and Mark then, have to fix that then, then, Mark, then your dad will go, <laughs> who's broke that f***ing shit? Then you won't sit there and go, <laughs> <laughs> laugh, and then that's it. Yeah, can't. So just leave the it's door. It's almost like you've seen that before, haven't you? Yeah, <laughs> many a times. <laughs> so, uh, one more skip. I actually, I, I actually messaged Field Fair about going to... Um... A Field Fair? No, Field Fair. To yeah. actually go into their factory to show you guys how skips are made, because there's a lot more to it than you might think. And I did yeah. email them, and she did get back to me and said they were going to speak to their boss, and then they never got back to me. So drop a comment on here, or if you know Field Fair, phone them and say, get your own down. Do you reckon it's difficult? Making a skip? Yes. You don't, make, you don't think it's difficult? I think Don't it's difficult. Fixtures, it? Pardon? Don't make fixtures. What's that mean? Well, you just cut the shape so you put it into a fixture that holds it, and you weld it up. Really? Yes. And oh, so it's just like pre-planned. It's just like pre-cut. It's, like, it's, like it's like IKEA skips then. Yep, basically, yep. Flat pack, put it together, weld it. Is it? Is me thinking they're really f***ing intelligent. And then charge like two thousand quid. You know your KA. Yeah. It's gonna go soon. It's not, man. So Honestly. Do you, know, do you know what it would kick off about that? Who? My dad. Why? Because he had to send Steve up to Scotland to fetch it in two days. You're just attached to the yeah, KO. Yeah, I'm quite attached to it, yeah. I don't want to go outside, it's raining. I want to go, I want to go and have a little moment with my, with my KO. You can look at it, man. It's look just, at it. just, it just looks. Just look at it. Do you want to know, know, know the story behind it? Why it ended up here? Because you found it. No, 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 no. We drove six of them around the North Coast 500. We lost Does it three. Work? It did start, it weren't now, because it ended up six months. Right? We lost three on the way around. This one, right, mine, I was brake tested by Will in front of me, not this Will, my pal Will, and I ran the back of him, done the radiator, smoke, all that, so yep. I dragged it. I was six miles south of John O'Groats, okay? Took it to the garage, couldn't fix it, so I said, right, scrap it. So I took the bits off it that I needed, carried on. One year later, I got a DM on Instagram. Harry, I've been driving your car around as a go-kart at the farm. It's still going, sent me a picture, I was like, you know, man, I've got to come did you rebuy it back? No, I didn't pay for it. You did, didn't I didn't you? pay for it. You rebought this back, you have. But you just won't tell anyone. You rebought this back. I never paid for it. I never paid for it. You have. Give me a little drink now. I'll get yourself a cup. Get yourself Thanks a... for keeping it. Yeah, for get me. yourself a curry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So this is this, right? We're in the... Where were we? Isle of Skye? Yeah. We're in the Isle of Skye, yeah? One of the, K... one of the KAs broke down. So I phoned the garage up. Oh, mate, I've got a car. It's broke. Can you come and collect it? The geezers turned up and said, you know what, mate? 100, 100 quid to scrap it. I went, what? He said... You pay 100 quid? Yeah. I said, what are you on about, mate? I said, I, I, I'm being funny with you. I am the scrap king. I know how it works. I've got the cat, the alloy, this. That car's worth 200 quid. And it was in mid-COVID, so even the cat on one of these was worth Would've 80, been, 90 yeah, quid. Yeah, yeah. I was like, you haven't had to. He said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where's the nearest scrapyard? We're in Inverness, 150 miles away. So we've got to get all the cars, save up like 15 of them, and then we'll get like... To, yeah. So actually, I thought, luckily it wasn't my car. Oh, Ricky, come Ricky! on! Ricky T, you're like a soft biscuit, let's go. Now he's been more like a hobnob lately, isn't he? It's hard. How many, how many of these can you do, like? Give me two minutes. All right, so anyway. Yeah, I've got to go and get the lids for... Harry. I've got to go and get... Harry. 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 He's what, Harry. Harry. Listen, Harry. Right? Harry. Yes, Harry. Oh, I'm d I listen to this, right, next week. I'm, oh, I can't film next Thursday. Well, I could film next. I don't know really what the crack is. Next week, I'm resitting my Whamitab. Oh dear, you love them kind of things, don't you? Whamitab. It's like a scrap, like a license, like a certificate. You love that. Yard. It's not your preferred thing, uh, is it? And then Wendy. And it's all day, isn't it? Obviously, I'm out the weekend for Craig's birthday, right? So I'm going to be hungover on Sunday. I'm definitely not going to be in the mood to revise. But Wendy said, "Oh, do you want me to give you all the booklets for the weekend?" I went, "No chance, man. I have half hour before I get there. That's what I'll do." Really quite a chance, mate. I got to sort that. I'm just doing as I'm told. Look. I'll just say, Do you nick it in the screen once? What are you doing with that? Well, the only one thing you screen once, yeah. <laughs> what? All right, all right. Fine, I hope you're in. Oh, Same. You're Same. Same bye. Same see ya. Fine, yeah. <laughs> hey, you said these were getting picked up four months ago. It's first we like. Yeah, they're still on the way. They're travelling. Yeah, Can I ask me the viewers if they want to get rid of them? Probably don't, yeah. So, we've got eight. <laughs> Hydrogen gas tanks. <laughs> that, uh, it's like empty, technically empty, but they are sealed, so we're, we're all petrified of actually doing anything with them. We all know what happened to uh, Hiroshima. Don't want that to happen in Birmingham. If there's any professional Come firms out there <laughs> that can get rid of and dispose of these correctly and safely, can you help us out? They've been here for months. <laughs> On that note, like, share, and subscribe, though. And look, there he is. See you next week. Bye, <laughs> Oh! <laughs>
He's going to slowly come back and age. Yeah, yeah. Come on, Nick. Let's go. Yep. You've got to come here because you've got to do the outro. You're going to have to come and do it. That is, it is absolutely missing your read them, man. All right, inside. Just give me two minutes, all right? Just open it. Will, I don't think I went. Hello! Like that. You know what I mean, mate? What the f was that? Why don't you open your phone like a normal? Hello! That's. <laughs> so, Foreman. Yeah. I had a lovely cash guy in. What was, the, what was the matter with it? Nothing. Well, oh, there was. You sent it off to be f***ing fixed. Um, what was it now? I don't know. Something was wrong with it. Had it fixed. Harry's part of the lost. No, 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 nothing to do with my phone. No, it's scrap. <laughs> Richard is a hoarder. Any car that comes in, he's like, oh, we'll get, you know, we'll, we'll sell this and this and the other. And he's lost the K now, so it is just fully scrapped.